Okay, uh, this 3D model uh, is um, um, very high version, very high resolution version with 74 million polygons. It's part of a bigger model. Uh, it is like a detail of it uh, with uh, more or less uh, uh, 231 square meters. Uh, it means that uh, to describe the geometry we can use two different solutions, the so-called canvas solution with a, a minimum quality geometry, that means 1000 polygons per 4 square meters, that is suitable for game engines like Unreal, Godot, Unity or Atom 3. Uh, non mentioning the solution that we have already with the virtual uh, mesh uh, in Unreal, so Nanite for instance. Uh, normally this is the goodest solu the best solution because we are able to work uh, seamlessly also in other tools like Blender in order to edit the model. Less polygons means uh, uh, more possibilities to edit the 3D model. This is the sake of all this solution. So um, 231 square meters means uh, 231 uh, thousands polygons. So first of all, we need to reduce this complexity. We go in the mesh, uh, the smith mesh. It's not normal to work with too much polygons, and so we make a, a replace nope. We want to have a, one more three D model here in the uh, in the chunk. So we are collecting uh, the information here and uh, we have uh, this polygon reduction. <coughs> okay, we got the, the Canva. Here we have... Uh, uh, there were holes. So there are holes and yeah. issues here yeah. in the geometry. Okay it will be a problem for us. But, uh, okay, it is uh, especially true in this case where we have, uh, unfortunately, some uh, uh, un undersampled uh, uh, parts of the model, like here. So we don't didn't have uh, in, um, photo shooting uh, coverage for the floor. But okay, just to know the limitations. Okay, this is model is fine for our work. Uh, it uh, and where it is, uh, it should be here. Copy maybe of something. Mm -hmm. No. The rest of, uh, 230. That is one. Okay, great. And we are here. So now we can export it. Uh, export model. We op we create a OBJ mono mesh. Uh, file and we are overwriting it. L in we are working in local coordinates in this project so we just press uh, OK and we get uh, the, the model. Now we are opening Blender. Here we are able to open the, the, this model, uh, to import it mo this model using uh, uh, not the normal importer but uh, the 3D Survey Collection Importer, 3D SC. Um, actually, there is, uh, uh, it's very easy to install it. Um, we'll put a link in the video. Uh, here it's an import uh, file, importer, multiple OBJs. Uh, we go on the... So if you export into uh, georeference coordinate system, then we need to use shift. Yeah, exactly. Um, topography, where it is? Uh, here. Mm, no, not coordinate, multiple OBJ. Tripola, processing, mono mesh, and here.
Okay, this is the 3D model. Now, uh, we need to cut it in pieces. Okay, here we have some issues, some issues on the geometry. And we need to close it, uh, to repair it uh, somehow, because we have uh, some holes that were closed here. And it's not a big uh, work uh, <coughs> here, you see. So we have also some uh, need to clean the model and uh, let's do it now in order to be safer e later uh, this is the broken part and here we are Let's do it this way and see again. Let's yeah. cut a little bit this part also and this. And we try to close the holes in a mo more suitable way. Even here and <coughs> here, let's see. It's better to, to, go to fill the holes in a new way and also here I guess yes mm. it's um, too much work in the end but uh, I really prefer to have clean clean stuff maybe this way and this way we have overlapping stuff here. Okay, we can. Um, we have to work a lot manually because it's not this only this part that is Good more Good evident. Uh, but also this part uh, and this part here. So I think that uh, it's better to um, let it like it is and uh, going back more with more photos we will make it again this this part of the stuff but just to understand where what is are the, the problems in future that we can expect if we don't fix this uh, uh, it will uh, it will be a broken model with uh, awful looking uh, flipping uh, geometries uh, and so during the real time experience will be uh, we're disturb disturbed by this noisy stuff with flipping uh, um, and absolutely w we, we, we will not be able to, to make a good stuff from it. So we will fight all the time at correcting uh, the, the stuff. You know that with 1000 per square meters we still recognize uh, the majority of the, the features on the surface. For that reason, it's a very interesting uh, um, solution. It's a Canva solution. Okay. Now we need to cut it in pieces. Okay. So what uh, I can do is to use uh, a tool here that is the segmentation tool. I select the, the mesh and I set cutter set. I have to ask uh, for uh, um, dimension here: 100 square meters. Uh, what does it mean? If I uh, click on cutter set, he will uh, try to cover the model with uh, squared uh, squares with 100 uh, square meters. So it's a 10 by 10 um, uh, square. But it's too much because we have, uh, in reality, we have also the Z dimension so if we cut something here and here we have to count both the plan pl the plan but also the elevation of the walls so we need to approximate it on 60 for instance no problem if we make it uh, smaller uh, and select the tack cutter set this is with 60 for instance and now we have all the uh, we have the possibility to go 
uh, uh, fine cutting it. Uh, we can reduce it uh, more than that, maybe also manually, this way. I click S and I reduce it this way. This way I'm pretty sure that I will not get some so important errors, you know. <coughs> And here I apply uh, the, this changing dimension with Ctrl A, and I apply uh, the scale. And with Ctrl A, I apply the scale of the transformation of the cutters. The cutters are uh, these geometries that I uh, just imported. After doing this, uh, I select the mesh with one click. Uh, I have uh, only these elements on the on my 3D scene. So what I what I'm doing now uh, ap it applies just to this situation. I have only this on the scene. I select on the the mesh I want to cut, and uh, I click A. It means uh, select all. But uh, uh, look at here on the corner we have cutter 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 plus uh, um, seripola mono mesh seripola mono mesh is orange a lighter orange and the other ones are in a dark darker color orange it means that all of them are selected but seripola mono mesh is active it means that when I uh, click on uh, some commands here, I will apply uh, on the active mesh the tool using all the selected stuff. So uh, it works if I select firstly it and with A select everything, add to the selection all the stuff here. Another way is to select uh, manually one, two, three, four, and the last selected one will be the active one. Two different ways to do the same thing. And now I can ask for segment projecting a series of selected elements using an active mesh. Uh, so I was I use one mesh to cut several meshes, or multi cutter. I use uh, an active mesh using several selected elements. I'm recording it uh, ah. as a video. So, but you take pause if you want. Um, I'm opening Windows Toggle System Console so I can see what happens under the hood. And I click on... Uh, I save it, uh, first of all. <laughs> save all the time. And I make a reality-based I use this uh, this naming RB means reality based model and here I will put the uh, seripola underscore RB that means the blender file with the reality based model and here I'm I will click on multi cutter and what is saying here uh, it's cutting the object cutter 1 of 4 is cutting the object seripola mono mesh 1 second and 24 and blah 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 so all the, all the process in 2 seconds and now I don't have only seripola mono mesh but I have different seripola mono mesh I take the cutters and delete them and here we are grab uh, we have uh, plenty of uh, uh, dirties because here we don't have a perfectly clean mesh. We have uh, several unconnected meshes that actually is an error uh, and we don't want the, it. It is fine, for instance. It is fine. It is fine, but this is not. Let's see what are these elements, flying objects. This one, this one, that are uh, mm, unwanted elements normally so control Z um, I can select ju just this one I enter in edit mode so I'm not working on this block as a wall but actually I'm going to work on it uh, as a, a family of uh, geometries so 
I enter in tab mode and here I can work on the, all the elements separately. I can, for instance, select this uh, polygon and X delete faces and I am able to edit it. Okay, this is very important. This is polygonal modeling and it's actually exactly what we need. We need to learn it. If you are going to make photogrammetry, you really need to know how to uh, edit it at the lower level possible, your mesh. It's very important. Other tools, just to know, uh, is the knife key. And the knife, I can use it to cut a model from a side to side, even snapping here. Good way to clean your photogrammetric model. You just cut parts of it. Uh, but pay attention to the fact that we have different ways to cut it. It's a very important uh, um, sub um, sub tool that is the um, X X ray. Uh, no, Z. Sorry, Z. Uh, cut through. Sorry, C means cut through. It means that uh, if uh, the model do a sort of uh, curvature and you are not able to see the back of something, maybe you are cutting uh, a column that is uh, in front of a wall. Activating the C, you are cutting both the wall behind and the column the, in the foreground. If you don't activate the C and you, and you cut, you cut just uh, what is visible. What is behind the column, you are not cutting it and you don't want it. You want to cut everything like a jig in, uh, <laughs> in Lupin uh, the third. And so activate with C, cut row on now. And I'm sure that I will cut it. Cut. And I, I can continue to cut, but I want to confirm it. Uh, pay attention. I don't, mm, I don't want to be in uh, the uh, face mode. I go back on the vertices mode and now you will see why it is so important. Cut again, plus C to cut row, cutting, and when I confirm I, um, I have uh, all these elements selected. It is especially important because I can, I can uh, now I need to uh, delete everything that is here in the lower part and I want to maintain what is in the upper part. So I can hide temporarily with H. I hide everything. I select for instance this. I press Ctrl L, Ctrl select linked, Ctrl L and I press cancel, cancel the vertices and I want to show back the selected part with Alt H, and uh, you know, the magic is done. It's a way to work. It's you just know to to learn and memorize the steps. No more than that. I'm recording it. <laughs> okay, Control Z. Very power way to, uh, to um, edit at the lower level possible a, a mesh. Okay, but here we need. With A, I select everything, you know. I need to select and maintain just this part. So, so I select just one vertices here and press Ctrl L. And I'm sele selecting everything but what is not needed. We have also dirty, dirty here. So I want to delete this. No, exactly the opposite. I want to maintain it. So I press Ctrl E. That means uh, uh, control invert, and I select all everything but what I need, and so I can press X. That means the cross go away, and uh, delete the vertices. Now we have a clean model here. Okay, next step. Uh, we have four uh, elements, and we want to use them to texturize. Okay, pay attention uh, to this. Um, we don't want to maintain the tubi innocenti, this one. So you, they are uh, iron uh, uh, pipes and we really don't want them. How we can uh, uh, 
to cut them away. We can work uh, on the different parts of the model, let's say this. We have the division on the numpad here, that means isolate, and the Blender will, will uh, put out of the memory everything but we, what we are working on. It's a very good way to, to isolate everything in a big scene with lot, plenty of stuff, and also we uh, have more power from a graphical point of view because we work just on it. Okay, here we can uh, uh, cut away pieces that we don't want, and so I go here, for instance, and let's say I can cut C throw, for instance, and I go here, or I can, can also do something like this, cut uh, C, sorry, cut C, this way, H, uh, and I can select this and make Ctrl plus. Ctrl plus is uh, selecting incrementally the connect the the, la the next uh, connected uh, vertice. So if I click Ctrl plus, I will select this one. Ctrl plus, and so on and so forth. You know. Ctrl plus, Ctrl plus, Ctrl plus, and I'm going here. Now I can select the last ones manually. Here we have a lot of double vertices and stuff. And here it's time to go on the low level. And to make it okay. Now if uh, I will use the tool to delete the vertices. So, if I'm going to click uh, to select also this low, these two elements, I will destroy also this polygon and this polygon and this polygon and so on. I don't want to do it. I just delete, uh, select till here. I press X vertices and I, I'm go, I'm making it. I select also this, for instance, on X axis, okay. And now I select uh, with Shift Alt and one click, Shift Alt and one click on a corner, and it is able to select every all the whole because it's not just selecting uh, um, an edge, but all the whole. It's uh, following the topology of uh, um, the whole. Shift Alt uh, left mouse click, and here I can fill with F or Ctrl Z. I can beautiful fill it Alt F. Beautiful filling. It's um, it tries to make a more sexy uh, filling mesh. Here we are. Uh, more interesting tools. Here we have a lot of dirties. Uh, in the re in, rea in the real life, uh, we had here some accumulation of mud, of uh, leaves, maybe. leaves, and so on and so forth. We, maybe we don't want it. Maybe yes, but just uh, now we are uh, learning here. So just to know, I can click tab, and I'm here. I can in object mode. I go in sculpt mode. In sculpt mode, I have I have a lot of tools, and I can uh, work a little bit on the surface with the smooth. Is Shift S, Shift S, and I now able with F, I can making the the brush the brush bigger, and I just uh, relax everything here. Good way to manage some some kind. Uh, pay attention, use it wisely, don't ab abuse. But good way to work on on models. Okay, here we are done, and uh, lastly, here, enter edit mode, vertices, 
vertices, vertices, vertices. Okay, here we are. Control L, X vertices, and again, let's close it. A shift Alt click, Alt F, and we are done. Okay, just to know how to reduce it. Uh, here we have some flying things. Alt H to oh, Alt H, sorry, to um, pop up hidden geometries because H hid objects and Alt H uh, uh, put them back. X vertices, and here we are. So now we have a correct model here, you know. Uh, again, the division symbol, and we go on the complete visual visualization. Again, the isolate tool here, and um, let's take out this. No, a lot of stuff here we don't need. Again. Uh, here, let's use the the cut. Yeah, cut C, and uh, more than that, uh, we can cut it. Okay, but we can also use uh, a C and Z, and Z is uh, a um, or uh, X, and we are forcing a direction. It is useful sometimes to have a um, perfectly planar cut you know, or Z and whatever, yeah, useful. Uh, click, and uh, we are in the uh, vertices selection mode, in edit mode, it's fine, I can confirm it with uh, one click, and again, we have to hide it, so H, and we select part of what we want to avoid, and I press Ctrl L, okay, and press X. Uh, R oh. H, and we are, uh -huh. and we are back. Here um, we can make a lot of things. We can make Alt F to fill, but it's dirty stuff with a lot of un unwanted and useless polygons here. So better to delete also this in this case. And uh, maybe this, we really don't need so much stuff here. And Alt, my um, Shift, left mouse click, and select everything. Alt F, beautiful feeling. And here we are. Good, good way to to clean models, isn't it? Okay, back here, save it. But don't worry too much about saving in Blender. Here we have uh, uh, three levels of uh, certainty, of uh, safe, sorry. Uh, we have uh, um, Recover. We can use the last session. So I, pay attention, I, I exit from Blender. Uh, save, no, <gasps> what have I done? You know, the sensation. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Blender saves a quit dot blend file in a temporary folder, and it is exactly what I really wanted all the all my entire life. And so you can go on the last session and open the last quit blend file, clever, or an auto save. Blender minutes by minutes saves. You just go uh, enter the auto save and open the last saved version. And so, I'm not saying, I'm not telling you don't say, no, don't take me wrong. So, uh, yes, control S, it's, uh, all the time a good stuff. But here it's very, it's a very good uh, thing that you don't have to, to be crazy about it. And again, uh, I really want to leave this model, this one, if you want, like this, and maybe you can work on it and playing. So I save it. So you can uh, use by yourself Blender and uh, cutting away the To Be Innocenti, the Italian name for this uh, <laughs> metal pipes. Okay, Ctrl S, and here we are. I select A, everything. 
and it's time to go ag again on uh, uh, in uh, MetaShape. So, first of all, I have to choose here an export folder. We are in the exporter uh, tab here in the 3D Survey Collection tab, export folder. I select here, and I go uh, not in RB, not in OBJ Mono Mesh, but in uh, OBJ Poly Mesh. I enter inside. I click accept. Um, okay, pay attention. Here is in a relative path. Uh, actually, we have some problems. Uh, some there are some small bugs in uh, 3D survey collection, uh, switching from different uh, operative systems. So avoid relative path now. Uh, in order to be sure, in some cases it works. In some cases not. Uh, okay, it's a small bug. To it's in the to-do list of 3D survey collection. Uh, so exports object in several files, you can export different OBJs. So click on OBJ. Uh, see now just now click export deer. Oh mod export deer. Yes. Bug. Sorry guys. Yes, we have okay. Okay, now we send select everything and click on OBJ to export it. And we are exporting it. If we look at the toggle system console, we have uh, all this the stuff exported. This, 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 and so on. In different files. It means that we have uh, here in OBJ PolyMesh, we have this. Okay. Uh, oh, ouch. One, two, three, and four meshes. Okay. So uh, go back on uh, uh, Agisoft. Agisoft. Here we need to work on this. Okay. We really need to have uh, a project, a seripola, for texturing. So we need to duplicate the project. But to duplicate this project that is full of a lot of stuff, uh, we will take uh, a geological, geological area in order to save it again. 10 minutes to save such a big data set. For that reason, uh, we go uh, out of uh, sync for one moment. So we don't sync errors in case. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I take the depth map and remove then point cloud and remove uh, all of this actually I'm gonna cry <laughs> exactly yes here we are and also the first chunk remove a uh, chunk I guess Okay, and we name it uh, um, master. Here we have just the tie points, the markers, and uh, it's a component here. What does it mean? Ah, parts. Ah, okay, mm, blocks. Okay, now don't save, but save as. <laughs> yes, I don't want you to kill me. Uh, text <laughs> to ring. And this is the Seripola Texturing project. Save it. Uh, can't read the file. Yes, it is not able to read it. Because, uh, but we don't need. Ah, because there are also the masks here. You masked yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so we need to reopen it back in order to download what we need from the QSync service. Otherwise, uh, we would have needed to clean also the co uh, the covering, and it was going to be hell. Mm, no, no, we, we we really need the co the, the mask because we have yes, the yes, but uh, I applied mask because uh, otherwise it would have reconstructed the covering. 
Yes, and uh, it's nightmare to clean that. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, no, it's it's okay. The process was correctly. Uh, so file save as not save. So seripola texturing and click save. And now it it is working. You know, great. Uh, this is the seripola texturing project. Okay how we work with this. First of all, we need to uh, select, um, to, to use the, um, the correct uh, tools. Um, this is a model where we will elaborate in Blender or? Uh, GitHub. Okay, here we are. And we need uh, the uh, 3D survey collection meta shape. There is a, a suite of different tools. Uh, we can uh, download it here, like a download zip. And we put it uh, wherever we want. Let's say that we put it uh, in uh, now in the desktop, just, just in case no more than that and we have to uh, run script select the script that is actually in the desktop folder and we use the import multiple models open ok and we select the polymesh folder select the folder and it is making uh, four different uh, projects, uh, ch chunks, automatically. Okay, if you have uh, hundreds of them, you will make what you need for text to texturize your, your work. Okay, now we start with uh, RunScript again and with uh, uh, texturize it. And press OK, click OK. And it's time to wait. Uh, with this algorithm, we have to target uh, this dimension. It means that for 100 uh, square meters, uh, we need uh, six uh, textures with um, 4096 by 4096. This is the, the golden number. If we have uh, um, a mesh with uh, 15 square meters will need three textures and so on and so forth. So we have, uh, if we have uh, a mesh with uh, 16 square meters or less, it's one with one texture and blah blah blah. Uh, this. Uh, um, this tool in in um, in axis of meta shape will uh, measure each uh, chunk, and uh, it depends on the the real dimension of it. Will use the correct number of uh, textures to texturize it. So we'll, you will get uh, automatically the correct number: three, three, two, one, four, six, whatever. whatever. And you will get uh, uh, different tiles with a correct coverage. It is working on every single uh, mesh that you have inserted, right? It's taking one. There are some cases where we need to work on uh, georeferenced uh, models. Okay. In that case, uh, we need to uh, use uh, the shift uh, parameters here in. Uh, in Blender. The shift parameters means that you have to uh, set an X, Y and Z shift to the original model. Uh, if we discover that this model is in, uh, uh, let's say, in, um, if we need to set the uh, georeferenced 
uh, coordinates for it, we need to shift maybe it for two, two millions and uh, um, 520 uh, meters. And uh, on wise, for instance, and you will uh, export it in absolute coordinates. Just an example, okay? Uh, it's not if, like we, this. If, if we export in meta shape, uh, in local or uh, georeferenced? The OBJ must be in l local uh, coordinates. You don't have. You normally, it's not a good idea to have OBJs in uh, absolute. Mm -hmm. And how do we write the coordinates where it is put it? You uh, told us, but... Uh, okay, um, let's see a, a, an example. For instance, in the Montebruno we have the shift file. This is a shift file. You have the EPS, EPSG. You know, all of us, all, all of us know what is an EPSG file. Okay, a PSG file, uh, it's an con international convention uh, that you can use uh, in order, of, uh, it's a public registry of geodetic datums, spatial reference systems and so on. So, the idea is that uh, uh, if you set this, you are able to extract all the information about the georeferencing. For instance, in Italy we have uh, um, 3004, 2003, because we are on different uh, slices. Uh, each place on the Earth has this APSG, uh, but the same place can be described with different APSGs, you know. Uh, so for that reason it's very important to know about when you op start a, a work on a place, uh, have to know what is the APSG here, okay, or, or in what APSG I'm going to work. Um, the APSG, the shift file, it's a standard that we created, so it's just for, for the tree survey collection, but actually we are going to work with it in several situations in laboratory. We can import it in Blender, this is the, the import official importer for it. For instance, uh, oh, let's open in Montebelluna, Control C, and here I click Montebelluna, for instance, and this shift file. It's downloading it, I think. Problems opening uh, files because it's I think it's in uh, it's in a list of uh, things to download you know and for that reason uh, Blender is waiting. Mm, but actually we can avoid it now. Okay now. Uh, it is done and we can work with it. So this is the biggest resolution we, we can have from this project. Um, some, sometimes uh, we can have uh, uh, the interaction of l long distance uh, images and short distance images. What does it mean? If I turn off the cameras, maybe we are using uh, for this place this and this but maybe we really we really need just this for instance so this is good for this okay um, so it's a matter of uh, the quality of the images uh, for that reason we normally make two different sets of photo shooting one photo shooting is just is for the photogrammetric solution with all the stuff plus some images, images uh, um, that were taken just to texturize and we put them in different folders so that uh, you just turn off all the cameras for the photogrammetic solution using just uh, images for the texturing and it's a good way to know exactly what you are doing 
because in order to take the geometry you have to take as much photos as possible but in order to texturize you have to take less images than possible but correct with no blur and so on and so forth uh, and if you have to pay attention to how to put the lights and so on it's better to do it in for the texturing set of images okay let's start with the third script and it's the um, desktop uh, main uh, and the rename chunks uh, we have uh, dirty uh, names seripola monomesh seripola monomesh dot uh, underscore zero zero one it's we don't need it so open the script and run it and we have uh, one meta shape two meta shape three meta shape and so on and so forth uh, now we can go on the third one, run script, and it's the export multiple models. Okay, uh, normally I need to have the shift file, for instance, control C, let's see. Uh, I go here in the OBJ polymesh, and let's make uh, um, OBJ poly. Oh, mesh text. It means that it is the textured. Okay, if I am working uh, in uh, absolute coordinate system in meta shape, I need to put here the shift file. Uh, also in the importing situation, okay. Also when I imported uh, here the OBJ poly mesh here. If uh, these uh, uh, meshes needed to be exported um, in uh, from fr from um, imported, sorry, from Blender to Agisoft, uh, we need to put here the shift file. If there is a shift, in this case we don't have a shift, so we don't need it. Okay, but if we need to. Uh, to uh, transform from uh, absolute to local and to local to absolute we need to put in the f in, in these folders just the shift file and uh, the plugin will uh, uh, the Agis of 3D survey collection will take care of it just if there is it uses it it uses it and uh, how do we add the coordinates in the shift file you put it just uh, we take one coordinate on the model and in the absolute, uh, in the, uh, for in instance, the exactly, you can take, for instance, uh, uh, the middle point, uh, or if you are working with uh, uh, different uh, excavations or different monuments in an ancient Roman town, for instance, maybe you don't want to put one of the sites, but maybe uh, the a point that can be common for all of them. Mm -hmm. At San Marino, we decided a point, uh, and we put it all the town of San Marino around that point all the different towers mm -hmm. so OBJ polyme polymesh without any shift because we are not working in uh, absolute coordinates okay so export multiple models open and click OK uh, pop uh, popping up specify destination folder for 3d models and I'm going in OBJ polymesh texture specify destination and here I select it is saving it in the correct format with the correct stuff and blah 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 here you can say I can save it and I can put it down and I have I will get all we need here you see now let's open blender again uh, we can avoid to have this stuff here, we can delete it if we want and import the new version, multiple OBJs we go here in the poly mesh textured and uh, select all with A and import and this is the new version here we have, uh, uh, I can turn on the textures here and this is the textured version. 
Okay, now, if I need to, to work on it, uh, I can, can do a lot of things, you know, here the, the problem. Smooth, so. or no, it doesn't work on the texture. Oh yes, absolutely, I can do whatever I want here, uh, texture paint, and I can clone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but here we have double Close. geometries, and mm -hmm. so I, I struggle to, to write on it. Problems, you know. Uh, here we can work a lot of on the stuff. For instance, here I can delete the, the leaves. No limits now. Very good tools now. Um, there are strange uh, uh, new parameters in Agisoft Metashape uh, since uh, it changed the lighting between the two different models. Uh, we have to change a little bit. This is not uh, expected, I, uh, to be honest. Uh, normally it doesn't happen. It means that something uh, changed. Uh, other the other photo. It was using other photo for one one photo for uh, the this uh, part and other photo for this yes. Part. But it is not uh, normal. Okay, so it uh, should shouldn't have to to be. But uh, let I if I select one and two together and I go on text paint. I can uh, do this, for instance. Let's see, uh, clone, okay, and uh, oh, but it's very interesting that I uh, just a moment, not selecting them together, but. Uh, putting them together, Ctrl J. They are the same now, I can, and now I can work on them. Uh, uh, texture paint, yes. I can, I can equalize, equalize them, or there are a lot of tools to do this, it's just to know. I, I, we don't do this, okay? Especially if you need to draw the mosaic. Exactly, <laughs> it's, it's not what we, we are going to do in this case. Uh, we have to set up differently the meta shape engi engine. Okay, so we will fix it. Um, okay, when we have this, we still have a lot of uh, geometry and textures because we have here is a multi material tree texture here, for instance, three textures here four textures here and here four textures so four plus four plus three plus three so eight plus six means 14 textures 4096 okay uh, let's see what is the, the resolution with the model inspector I select it for instance and I ask the geometry 45 square meters, this is the number of polygons, or something about the textures. One object, three materials, 4096. Or more than that, the main resolution. Uh, it, it, uh, there is a pop-up providing you the possibility to save a CSV file with the, 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 all the stuff here. Let's save it here, for instance. And the main resolution is 1.23 millimeter per pixel. It's a exactly what we wanted and 1035 polygon for, for square meters it's fine let's do it for all the stuff here together and this and save it again on the home uh, desktop sorry export and let's open it in order to see how it works uh, Okay. I 
and so we have statistics about what we have done. Good way to, to have a look about. Um, here is the UV ratio. UV ratio means, uh, um, you know, when you put a bidimensional image on top of a three-dimensional object, uh, mesh, you are not able to use all the surface of the bidimensional image because uh, mm, you have to uh, modify the 3D version in order to wrap it on top of a bidimensional object. Uh, like in the case of uh, your box with the, your cereals, uh, prefer the cereals uh, in the morning at breakfast. You uh, take the box of the cereals, uh, you cut it with uh, uh, the scissors and open it, uh, a box that is a three-dimensional object, in something that is bidimensional. It, it, it is the original shape of the box, you know, because uh, a three D a printer printed uh, the, the drawings on the on the cereals box. So it is the original uh, situa situation. But if you open it and put it uh, on your table, you will get uh, also some kind of uh, seams on the on the corners. You will not get uh, a perfectly squared object. You will get something with uh, uh, um, very, uh, let's say, not straight lines in the corners. If you have to put an image and put it on the box, uh, on the cereal box, you are you will lost some information. We don't use part of the bidimensional image to drop it on site. Normally, this is the ratio. You uh, use only 60% of the image just to have an idea of um, the editing. This part is uh, unwrapped and put it here. <coughs> what you get for each, for each material in the end, let's say this material one. Um, select this material. This material this part of the mesh is uh, uh, projected on a image that is this one this part <coughs> is used this part of this image is used here here is unused let's say this is the uh, one empty empty one one empty empty one here you see uh, this is the the wall and here you don't have information it's uh, uh, lost memory you use it actually but to describe what nothing so the, the, the they are like island in the sea the islands are uh, information used but there is the sea on the sea you can build uh, buildings <laughs> you can do anything it's just losting information and normally you get uh, more or less 60 percent if you are if the algorithm is is making a good work let's say uh, for that reason you are not using all the surface must only 60 percent and taking into account this you will get this resolution this is especially important to take advantage of it. Okay, here we are. Uh, now, from now, um, we need to uh, make different level of details of it. What does it mean? It means that uh, now we have a good computer here, and uh, more than that, uh, uh, we have a small room. This one room. But what if we have all the sides? If here we have 14 textures for all this uh, uh, building, maybe we need uh, two, uh, maybe 200 or 300 for all the site. Don't don't talk about all the site. Maybe 500 textures. Too much to visualize everything together, you know. And if you open it in Blender, because you need to work with it, uh, you can get go crazy. So. 
The idea is to make diff different level of details. I select them. Let's see how it's going to uh, say to us the, the add-on. So open it. Uh, and uh, uh, set this as lot zero. It means that uh, it's cleaning the model. This is important. It is uh, cleaning the model. And uh, it is adding lot zero at the end. Plus, uh, it's renaming it. It's ob one empty object mesh one material one and so on. This way we can import it also in uh, Unreal Engine. There is a, a tool that needs to have a very good naming in assets and it makes it automatically. Now we want to make different level of, level of details. What is a level of detail? You can have the, a representation of this battle with all the, the mesh and the, the textures but we can have also a very still stilized version of it, a lower level of detail. You got the point? So, two levels of details. Uh, this, the first level of detail, lot one, that should be not the lot zero is the best one. It's uh, inversed. Lot zero is the best. Lot one, less good. Lot two, lesser. Lot three, the worst, and so on. You can make also lot 100, but it not, doesn't make sense, lot one. So, first time, please reduce by half, 0 0.5, the decimation. And please use, uh, for each block, one texture of 2048. Or, if I want to go on Atom, maybe, I say, okay, I have just this room, why don't to make uh, four big uh, images, to have, let's say, Good, uh, good information because you can't use the lot zero on Atom, but maybe you can use uh, a lot um, one like this because you are still able to charge not uh, six, not fourteen textures, but maybe four yes without any problem. So let's do the load one this way, so it's uh, load uh, is atom capable. Uh, and let, let's make a very reduced uh, version with a big decimation and uh, with small texture here, or even more than that, very poor quality. But sometimes it's enough. You decide. Please use just multiples of uh, uh, you know power of two numbers, all of you, no problem, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on, so on. There are the, the ways the text should be, don't use different numbers in computer graphics. Okay, we select all of these, and uh, let's generate, let's generate uh, the level of details, generate. And here, what, are the, what is happening? Uh, it's making the load 0, 1 of 4, creation of load 1. Four objects will be processed, load 1. So, making the load 0, decimating the original mesh, creating new texture, passing color data from load 0 to load 1. And it's going on. Um, when you have uh, not clean um, geometries, you will get some uh, issues here because it's not able to correctly decimate. So it's very important to have clean, uh, uh, clean data. You know, uh, it is working. Info: Baking map saved on internal image. Save it externally or pack it. So. Next. So more or less the 49 seconds for block. 49 seconds, 49 seconds. In let's say in four minutes we have we will get our result. Um, now we are creating just uh, we have uh, lot zero and then we are creating lot one and lot two. Correct. The first one is 0, 050 with uh, 4096 texture, and the second one is very de uh, decimated. Exactly. Okay. You can you can tune tune it uh, uh, as you want. Let's open in a while just to understand what we are doing, uh, Unreal Engine. 
so I, we can immediately drag and drop uh, this stuff to visualize it here. <coughs> Project uh, um, test lot. here and it's still working a lot of time to do it uh, too much time in the end I think it's the setup uh, with Qsync that is uh, disturbing it normally it's far more uh, quicker than that I didn't why I much <laughs> okay so we got the, the result uh, and we have uh, two, three level of details. The load zero actually was a collection and uh, we have to rename it uh, in load zero. So um, we turn off the load zero, we can turn on the load two to work. Uh, I save it, save, okay. And now it's time to go uh, on uh, um, to, to check it uh, in in a real just to, to have fun. Uh, I go here on uh, viewport shading this way and I select every, all the stuff. You see overlapping geometries, you know, because there are different levels of details, so the geometries are a little bit different. Let's see the difference here. This is the lot 2, this is lot 1, and lot, lot 0. No, different uh, shape. You see, very, very simplified version of it. And at, with good results, you know, good way to, to solve it with this spike. It's correct, you know. The equal distance. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes, not to, not a bad tool, not a, a bad solution. Now, I go this way, and uh, let we need to create uh, uh, clusters. What does it mean? Uh, I need to have this plus this and plus this. So the ob the object one, the three di different uh, level of details. They should be packed in a file and exported to another another uh, software. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's say Unreal. In order to do this, I select everything and I click on Load Clusters, Create Load Clusters, and uh, he, he created the, this GLOD Group Load. Okay. Uh, it is automatically done by the, the, the software. Now I select everything, I select the folder when I, when, I, when I need to export it. Let's say that I make a folder on desktop. Um, I don't love to make folders in desktop, but okay, let's work in a correct way here. And uh, let's make a fbx load folder. Better and I click accept and here we are 
now I can click on create a fbx file yeah it's true sorry again it's development software um, I changed it yes fbx mode export yes I, I need I wanted it dot generator pi I send it to the community. So it's automatically updating. Oh, you are working on the on the directly on the computer. Yes, and I clicking on GitHub update, and now if you download it, it works exactly <laughs> like here. Uh, and uh, here we are, reality based and FPX load. Now, I open uh, Unreal Engine. And let's go on the, here on the content. Let's create uh, a new folder and we name it, uh, let's say, uh, Seripola Test. And I just drag and drop here the stuff. Okay, uh, important when we work with uh, uh, Unreal Engine, but also for all kind of uh, um, uh, real-time engine. Thank you. <laughs> so advanced, uh, we have to say, oh, I'm working with a level of detail model. So you are importing its mesh advanced, a static mesh load group, uh, level architecture, why not? But let's say that we don't want to put it in, into a group. We just want to say, hello guy, import mesh lot, please. This is what we really want. But uh, otherwise, there are also other stuff. But uh, if you are not proficient uh, or at least uh, basic information on Unreal, we don't have to dive into this. Import all. Sharing computing, and here we are. Uh, we have to import it here now. Let's create, let's say, a, a folder with Seripola. Uh, and let's drag and drop this stuff here. You see all the models, all the textures, and everything, everything is fine. Uh, save all assets, save all. And uh, um, yes, compiling and blah blah blah. We need these four assets here. Just to know, in Unreal, each element uh, is uh, uh, an asset a texture, a material, and whatever. So I take them this way, and I drag and drop them here. I put them in 0, 0, 0, and with F I fly. Okay. <laughs> uh, but what is very interesting here is that uh, Okay, okay this, uh, we will solve it, don't worry. I will need to put hands on. Shadows, some strange. Yes, strange shadow here. I will, we will take care of it as well. Um, 
this is because we don't have we need uh, to have uh, the shadowing uh, calculated or okay look uh, this is static mesh component and this is and we need all this stuff uh, you see lot zero and blah 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 we need uh, to have uh, double face uh, meshes so with that we don't have any problem aha uh -huh. now it's uh, putting light to yes different light to if you have a, a light from back for an object for example this is used for an object but not for a picture. they are open meshes you don't have the closed mesh if mm. if i put something in the back you don't have this kind of word mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can fix very quickly it. okay let's see that now we want to show not it but uh, it's uh, mm, up here, lit uh, load visualizers uh, uh, pa 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 level of detail correlation mesh lots. Look, load two red, it's load one, load zero. Mm -hmm. So, what does it mean when you go th in this kind of model? Uh, you have here, this one is loaded in memory at the highest level possible, so it's, lo it's load um, zero. These three back are uh, uh, loaded as load two, so very low poly and with low texturing and so on and so forth. During your exploration, maybe with your head mounted display, you hear, okay, here you have to load to load everything in the best possible solution uh, but when you go outside let's say or in another room you will go get uh, uh, the the correct uh, model the correct uh, resolution you know let's save it save all and close now going back here a uh, i want to uh, remove the cluster group so it's a bit a little bit cleaner here otherwise we, we can create and, and destroy them no problem just pay attention to select everything and unselect everything I am, I am a very lazy uh, developer so I develop just what I need and so uh, there is a lot of error prone situations but otherwise if you go the pipe you don't you will not get uh, any problem I normally turn it off everything but the lot 2 so if I want to open this file I, I am able to open it even with a small laptop 